And thanks for staying with us here on the Joy News Channel. This is The Pulse, but we're bringing you a breaking story that we have on this developing story about uh, the former Minister for Sanitation, Cecilia Abinadapa, as we are now confirming uh, from our Joy News sources that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is now moving ahead to charge Cecilia Abinadapa for not declaring her income uh, and we're getting details uh, on that uh, for you as uh, presidential correspondent Elton Brobe is on that beat. Uh, joining us in studio now with the story that we're learning of, Elton, is just coming in and coming fast because many of us initially uh, were, were of the view that the OSP was simply going after her because of this uh, scandal that we know of uh, regarding how she's kept and stashed uh, a lot of money at home. Mm. Uh, now that is fast changing because the Office of the Special Prosecutor is now going ahead to do something more. Give us the details. Let's start off with this fresh charge that the Office of the Special Prosecutor... Right, has. so, so Blazer, this is just coming in from... Uh, we have court documents. In fact, I'm going to share with you two Precisely. court documents. One from the Office of the Special Prosecutor and then... Another one from uh, Madam Cecilia Dapa, the former Water and Sanitation Minister. So uh, these are related matters. Remember that we're all you know, warming up to uh, the court case tomorrow because uh, Madam Cecilia Dapa lawyers, they filed a process in court asking for abridgment of time. You know, the OSP went to court asking that the court allow it to continue to hold on to the seized cash and then for a confirmation. And we we are aware that the original date for the movement of that motion would have been on the 18th of october now uh, this week on monday we heard from lawyers of for madam cc that they filed some process in court hoping to move it tomorrow for abridgment of time that they want to bring the case forward now there are two new developments on this matter first is uh, an application that has been filed in court uh, the high court by the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor, and this is the Republic versus Madam Cecilia Dapa, and the charge sheet is count one, statement of offense, failing to comply with a lawful demand on an authorized officer of the Office of the Special Prosecutor in the performance of his functions, contrary to section 691 of the Office of the Special Prosecutor Act 2017. Now, let me read to you the facts of the case. According to uh, the, the, the charge sheet that the OSP has filed in court. Madam Cecilia Abdanda passed 68 years old uh, on August 2023 in Accra, in the Greater Accra region, and within the registration of this court, mm -hmm. being a suspect yeah. under investigation for corruption and corruption related offenses, including using public office for profit in respect of suspected tainted large sum uh, reportedly stolen from. Uh, your residential premises, and this which is which was the initial, initial exactly. case that we all know and about. also retrieved from same by the office of the special prosecutor without lawful excuse, failed within 30 days to comply with a notice to declare your property and income served on you by the special prosecutor yeah. on August on July 24th, 2023, and a regulation 21, and the regulation is provided here as yeah. follows. And um, uh, so this is the case that has been filed in court. Indeed. By the and office we know of, that, that the Office of the Special Prosecutor says it is doing this based on further assessment of the earlier case. Right. Uh, the lawyers of Cecilia Bernada as we know it, uh, were planning, obviously, as part of their uh, ordinary procedure, to challenge the claims by the OSP tomorrow. Yes. That was for sure. Now, that, so, so this is a different matter. Okay, yes. And now this, uh, this is... This is another step taken by the OSB right. to charge here. Now, tomorrow's case would have been for the lawyers to ask for an abridgment of time to yeah. bring the, the hearing of the, of the motion forward. Mm -hmm. But this is entirely different matter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the OSB is taking a step further to charge her. Now, let me just give you the facts uh, to be adduced. Yes, we, we, we need that the because of that's the uh, critical. Case. Initially, um, all the evidences were around how uh, she sold some properties, how the, the, her uh, dead brother's account was used. And, of course, the response from the law is that all of these is causing her and toward hardship. Her accounts had, had been frozen. But the OSP has further evidence and, and is uh, adducing that uh, in this fresh uh, matter that's before court. So according to the OSP, the accused was until 22nd July 2023, the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources. He's a suspect under investigation by the Office of the Special Prosecutor for corruption and corruption-related offences, including using public office for profit in respect of suspected tainted large sums 
reportedly stolen from a residential premises and also retrieved from, from same by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. The evidence, according to the OSP, will establish that on the 24th of July, 2023, the Special Prosecutor, in the performance of his functions, served on the accused a notice to declare her property and income under, under Regulation 21, and the form is provided as, as, as an attachment. The accused, according to the OSP, was duly notified as per the statutory forms and by a cover letter under the seal of the Office of the Special Prosecutor and the seal mark of the Special Prosecutor that she was required by law to make the specified declaration and return same to the Office of the Special Prosecutor as per Form 12 of the first schedule of the legislative instrument within 30 days of service of her of notice. As at the close of business on the 5th of October 2023, the accused person, according to the OSP, had willfully failed without lawful excuse to return the duly completed statutory forms to the Office of the Special Prosecutor more than 30 days right. after the service of the notice and forms on her. The accused has been duly charged with the offence on the charge sheet. Okay. And for, again, for again who, let me run yeah, through yeah, quickly. The, the charge sheet. Mm -hmm. the, the charge sheet yes. uh, relates to her failure to declare her income and property within 30 days as specified by the OSP you know, regulations. Uh, let, let's try and, you know, get our viewers to have a simple breakdown of what's happening now. Uh, because for many who have followed this case, it's always been about the cash. The OSP now has a different argument, which you've just read to us. In simple terms, what's the summary of, of the OSP's demands? So again, the, the facts, according to OSP, that will be adduced in court. The claim is that the accused, the former minister for water and sanitation, Madam Sisi Abdullah Dapa, uh, is under investigation by the office for corruption and corruption related offenses, including using public office for profits in respect of suspected tinted yeah. large sums of cash reportedly stolen from a residence yes. and also retrieved same from the by the office of the special prosecutor. Now, according to the office, the evidence will establish that on July 24, yes. the special prosecutor in the performance of his function served on the accused a notice to declare her property and income under Regulation 21, uh, you know, of the, of the, of the legislative yes. instrument. Yes. Now, the accused, according to OSP, was duly notified as per the statutory forms and by a cover letter under the seal of the Office of the Special Prosecutor, and that she was required by law to make the specified declaration and return same to the Office of the Special Prosecutor as per Form 12 of the first schedule of LI 2374 within 30 days yeah. of the service on, on her of the notice. As at the close of business, according to the OSP, the OSP. Mm -hmm. on October 5, 2023, the accused, the minister, the former minister for water administration, had willfully mm -hmm failed without lawful excuse to return the duly completed statutory forms to the office of the special prosecutor more than 30 days after the service mm. of the notice and the forms on and, head. And, and Elton, and the th th this charged. is why we believe this is so important, because if you draw the link, the OSP complied with the earlier court directive, but then moved ahead to subsequently freeze the accounts of, of Madame Cecilia Abinadapai again. And asking her to declare her income, right? That would then provide a fair idea to the OSP to know what her source exactly has been all this while. What we managed to acquire within the period that you served as a as a public officer. Anyway, uh, Elton, thanks for bringing us. But again, this. But, uh, yes, we, we need to talk issue. about yes uh, so, so, <laughs> the, the, the so, second so, lecture, so Madam this, which is very Park, critical. Mm -hmm. The former minister for water yes. has has now gone to the the human rights court, you know, which is on a separate development, which is also on a separate development, and then is seeking to stop the OSP from continuing with um, the investigation that is currently yeah. ongoing. So lots of issues happening, and uh, obviously all of these uh, we need to break down. Uh, let's bring in lawyer Martin Pebble, who's uh, also uh, joining us this afternoon on a raft of issues that are uh, just developing. In fact, as we speak, the uh, Office of the Attorney General has also issued another document uh, indicating why it's unable to prosecute uh, names mentioned in the Professor Frimpong Boateng case. Uh, we'll get to all of that shortly, but Elton, just stay with me. Let's bring in lawyer Pebble. Uh, uh, lawyer Martin Pebble, the OSP now uh, taking a more decisive action on Cecilia Abinadapa. Well, some say it's just furtherance of uh, you know what, what we've seen in the last few days, uh, the need for her to declare her source of income. She's failed to do that, and the OSP is taking her on. Uh, is that, you know, in line with lawful practice? Absolutely, uh, blessed. Absolutely. That's the law. Section 69 of the OSP Act. 
at 959, right? Says yeah. that if the OSP requires you to give information and you don't give it, then that constitutes an offense, right? So that is what the OSP has uh, stood on in order to charge Madame Dapa. So this one simply put, is failure to provide information to the OSP. That's just a failure. So uh, in time, we will see if there is evidence to uh, charge her with sub the substantive offenses of corruption or corruption-related mm. offenses. Uh, th so not... those ones are separate. Yeah, that, does it not seem as though the OSP is being overly fixated, if we, we could use that word, uh, on Madame Cecilia Abinadapa? Here's one case being dealt with on monies relating to uh, issues relating to the money that was stashed in a home. And then you have the OSP going ahead to trigger this action as well. Uh, should that be described as some sort of fixation on her uh, for, for, for reasons we are not able to explain now? No, blessed. I, I, I'm trying very hard to see if there's any reason for us to think there is a fixation and uh, over fixation ever. I'm not really seeing any. Look, on the contrary, hmm, I don't think we've done enough in terms of fighting corruption. We've not done enough at all. Like we've been saying, look, Madame Dapa is not alone. We want to search the rest of the ministers. You think Madame Dapa is alone? This money that we've seen in her uh, home, it's just a tip of the iceberg. It's long been out there that no, our ministers have lots of our Ghanaian taxpayers' money in their homes. It's long been there since last year. But I know professionals like us didn't want to, you know, amplify those comments because you would be said that where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? You know, corruption is very difficult to fight. You won't find evidence lying around and about that you pick up and use against the. Uh, what do you call it, those involved. So sometimes it takes some proactive measures. So look, Madame Dapa's case is just a tip of the iceberg. So every day that there's a new development in this case, it's also an opportunity for us to remind Mr. Kisie Jabin that he should search the rest of the ministers. He should search them. He will find more money. The same thing for the presidency. They are the people holding all the money. Why do you think we are suffering? It's because the money it's in their pockets and in their homes. So they, I don't see the uh, over fixation mm. or fixation simpliciter. No, it's just the due process that uh, Mr. Ejabin is going into. And you know, uh, what do you call it? Let me pick the law. So I was expecting that Madame Dapas lawyers would advise her because it's been stated here that offense is section 69. Let's read uh, parts of it to, you know, enrich the discussion. It says, offenses related, relating to search, seizure, and obstruction of authorized officer. So section 69.1, a person who fails to comply with a lawful demand of an authorized officer in the performance of functions under this act. Then B, fails to produce property declared to be seized under this act. Then C, conceals or attempt to conceal property liable to seizure under this act or d furnishes information as to an uh, information to an authorized officer which the person knows to be false commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a fine of not less than 500 penalty units mm. and not more than 1000 penalty units or to a term of imprisonment of not less than two years and not more than four years or both. So these are offenses that have been created in order to make right. suspects and accused persons cooperate with OSP. And Madame Dapa has not. This one is black and white. I see. Uh, even as we speak, the lawyers of uh, Madame uh, Cecilia Abana Dapa are also making another attempt to stop the exercise of the uh, office of the special prosecutor that's also um, another developing issue attached to this uh, decision by the osp to charge cecilia benadapa elton break that down for us then i can get the um, you know thoughts of uh, lawyer martin people on that so the letters are also picking is that madame cecilia benadapa has also filed through her lawyers has filed you know an application at the human rights court and uh, he she is she is seeking a declaration that 
the respondent, that's the Office of the Special Prosecutor, re-seizure of the money initially seized from the applicant's home yeah. on 24th of July and refreezing of applicants' bank accounts respectively on the 5th of September is unfair, unreasonable, capricious, arbitrary, and ultra virus. The respondent, statutory powers under Act 595 relative to the constitutional provisions of Article 23 and 296 of the Constitution. Now also seeking an order of, for the respondent to release the money received yeah. on the 5th of September to the applicant and to unfreeze her bank account. Also, an order prohibiting the respondent, that's the Office of Special Prosecutor, yeah. from continuing the investigation of the applicant for corruption or corruption-related offenses. Any such further or other yeah. uh, orders as the Honorable High Court may deem it fit. Now, the, applic uh, the applicant prays the court for the relief deposed uh, and, and, and these are the matters that I have I see. just and so, so basically, and so the, 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 the lawyers are asking that, uh, first of all, the decision that the OSP took to refreeze, you know, this account, because initially it was frozen, they went to court, the order was given, and now they are asking that that order be enforced because the uh, OSP carried out another freezing exercise again on these accounts. And then they want the money is also released to her. Yes, of course. I mean, the, 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 the claim is that the, 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 the OSP is relying on information arising from an unlawful arrest and search and also on grounds already found by the High Court to be unsatisfactory right. that the OSP has mm -hmm. exercised its powers of seizure without a warrant as the circumstances prevailing before the court ruling on the 31st of July 2023 remains the same and respondent has failed to adduce any proof of intention yeah. on the part of the applicant to conceal, destroy mm -hmm. or dissipate the alleged tainted property that the re-seizure, like I said earlier, yeah. the court should make binding orders uh, which commence the re-seizure the, and, the, and then the refreezing mm. in flagrant breach of enabling act and the high court ruling also in July. And the, finally, the balance of the appellate lawyer is saying that the, the OSP actions are arbitrary, unreasonable, unlawful, and in flagrant breach of act oh, five, five, 959. Right. So these are the orders uh, she's seeking in court, and this is just coming in. I see. Uh, Elton Borba is our presidential correspondent, uh, bringing us uh, the latest on this. For those of you who have not heard it here on the Join News channel, we just, we're just breaking the story to you that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is going ahead to charge Cecilia Bernadapa for failing to uh, you know, disclose uh, uh, you know, her, to declare her income and also uh, property as well. Uh, then we know that the latest is that the lawyers also of Cecilia Bernadapa are taking another action or, uh, also in court, asking the court first of all to unfreeze the accounts um, of, um, or to defreeze the accounts of uh, Cecilia uh, uh, Bernadapa and also to ensure that all the monies that were seized are released to her. This is the latest attempt uh, from the lawyers of Madame Cecilia Bernadapa. And then they are also going ahead to ask the court to halt the exercise, a probe which is ongoing by uh, you know, the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor. Absolutely. So we are all waiting to, uh, to see what happens tomorrow because uh, both the OSP and, and the lawyers will be in court, will be in court to decide. Move in motion as to whether the, the, the order should be brought forward. Right. Uh, grateful, Elton. Uh, lawyer Martin Pebu, you're still with us. Uh, the, the action being taken by the lawyers of uh, Cecilia Bernadapa to, uh, you know, first of all, try and squash that order, the order from the OSP declaring that it will refreeze the account of Cecilia Bernadapa. Was that um, something that many of you are expecting? Expected, but you know, we are a country of laws. Okay, so we have the rule of law and it's within Madame Dapes' rights to challenge every step of the process reasonably. So it's okay, we should grant her a day in court. It's all right, you'll find that such powers have been exercised in the past in this manner. Uh, I've said it on other platforms, people will tell you, and I'm sure you'll find thousands of our citizens who can attest to situations where, like this one, they go to court, then the court says, you are discharged. I'm talking about a criminal case. Mm -hmm. The court says only, so so and so person is discharged, maybe for various reasons, the prosecutor didn't come, or the prosecutor is supposed to file some documents he didn't file. Now, when the accused person steps out, just outside the court, the police should rearrest him, and take him back into custody and start the court process all over again. And it's been ruled by the courts that it is not illegal. 
So that's a practice that has been known to rise for decades. So that's the same thing Mr. Yabin has done. So I'm sure with time, you even find maybe ordinary citizens posting on your uh, on your platform that yes, he's experienced some. It happens all the time in court, all the time. For one reason or another, a criminal case can't go on. Then the judge will write, I mean, make an order. I hereby discharge the accused persons. Discharge means you go, but they, you've not been acquitted. So all I'm trying to say is that the case that went before Justice Chum, that the Justice Chum ordered the currency to be returned to Madame Dapa and the accounts uh, based on frozen or defrozen, didn't go into the merits, okay? If the judge was saying that Uh, we, we seem to be having um, some challenges with the connection there. Um, Lawyer Martin, people, if you're still with us, uh, we, we lost you briefly on, on that point. Uh, are you able to take that for us again? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, but if, for those of you who are joining us on the channel, uh, the one you watch right and see right behind me is the one in hot waters as we speak. Cecilia Benadapa, uh, of course, being charged again by the Office of the Special Prosecutor in this uh, breaking story that we're breaking, bringing to you on grounds that she's failed to declare her income and also uh, property, as the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor is pointing out. Uh, Cecilia Benadapa's law is also, on the other hand, going to court and asking the court, first of all, to defreeze the account release a stolen cash uh, to her and also restrain the office of the special prosecutor uh, from going ahead uh, with any further prosecution. This is a developing matter and we'll be bringing you some uh, updates uh, on that. But this afternoon...